right, guys, welcome to the Sassy Podcast. Today is episode six, and we have some guests with us today. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. We got some new people. First, we got Khadija. Hello, hello. I'm Khadija. I'm a GSU student. Um, what you do? What you do for hobbies? Like, what do you do outside of school? Well, outside of this, or outside of school, I do this podcast. I work on some podcasts, um, editing, uh, audio and visual. Um, I write, and I'm a reporter. Okay. That's about it. That's- it's right up my alley. And this is my co- co-host for a little while, so y'all will hear her again. So get used to Khadija. Um, we also have Greg with us today. Go ahead, Greg. Introduce yourself. Hey, it's Greg. You know, since they fifty one fifty. Follow him on IG. Is that all oh, your yeah. uh, social media platforms? Or uh, I think on Twitter is since they go house. So all right, babe. You know. We'll remind y'all at the end of the episode what those are. So. All right, what you like to do? What you got going on, you know, right um, now? Any business and Well, I'm a business owner. Period. You know, I own Premier Home Inspection. I don't know if you know about it. Okay. But, you know, I have a home inspection company, you know, striving to be great. Yep. That's what it is. Okay, and we're going to drop the deets for those, too. <laughs> we're going to make sure y'all know where to get that work at. Okay, so we just going to jump right into the episode. Um, So our topic, topic for today is going to be about funding your significant other out of wedlock. And um, I know that sounds like really, you know, tough, but really we just talking about, you know, um, how do you feel about, you know, putting into money money into a relationship where you haven't put a ring on it yet or you haven't received a ring for it yet? So, um, Khadija, say, you know, like, how do you feel about out of wedlock financing? I really don't see anything wrong with it because I feel like you have to sometimes put money into something that you possibly see a future with Mm -hmm. because you never know. You could start dating somebody and then you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to put anything into this person. But you constantly keep dating them and you're dating for like a year or two and you've never helped them with anything. You've never put any type of money into the relationship. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's possible. That's how you get to marriage and potentially being in a serious relationship with that person. That's true. Well, I mean, I came up with the topic because um, I I heard some interview I was listening to and someone brought up a topic of a guy in a relationship with a girl and um, she didn't want to have sex out of wedlock. And so when she when she uh, brought that to his attention, he kind of hit her with the, okay, well, if we're not having sex out of wedlock, I don't want to finance anything to do with this relationship out of wedlock. Like, I'd rather wait till, you know, we're married to pay for nails and dates and shit like that. So, Gray, do you agree with, like, would you feel the same way? <laughs> um, I really believe it's, it's really off the vibe that y'all got because, I mean... You know, you could be, you know, y'all might have a, a godly relationship mm-hmm. where, you know, that's that's what y'all long and you know, then you have to take that chance for real. So I don't wanna just say it like that, but I'm not gonna tell you be a sucker. <laughs> right. And you know what I'm saying, that's just true. be buying this, that and third and you don't really see no outcome of this. So. We love the tricks though, you know. Yeah, that, right. That, I think that's why. Shit. Yeah, that's why men don't yeah, do it though, because it's like, oh, she's no just... sucker. <laughs> yeah, you know what you're dealing with too. You know, so that's true. I well, so do you consider um, financing? You know, and like paying for dates or uh, paying for, sure, for her nails for sure. or whatever. You so you feel like that's? Uh, yeah, I feel like you know what I'm saying. That's not okay. It's tricking if you if you if you got it. <laughs> okay, that's true. Okay, so um, that I, and that makes sense. I agree with that too. It's not tricking if you got it. So if you if you have it to do it, then yeah, why not? Want to spoil your significant other? You don't even have nothing to do with wedlock and all of that stuff. I think. How would you know though, like if she's just using you for money, or if you like like what are some signs that you see in a woman that you're like, oh yeah, this is this is gonna go somewhere, and I'm not a trick. Well, I don't think it should be one-sided, especially, like, in the beginning of the relationship as well because, like, you know what I'm saying, we go on a date. Most likely, I'm going to pay for the first couple dates. (laughs) Right, okay. I'm not even going to say anything about it. But I feel like, um, as a person, you're supposed to be like, okay, um, maybe I should, you know what I'm saying, um, get the popcorn or or just that, (laughs) you know, because... He done took me on five dates and, you know. Yeah, and made all, I, I mean, spent all right. this money. Yeah, yeah, and I ain't made no effort to show him, like, you know, um, you know, I, I got myself, too. Yeah. I feel like 
um, in today's society, everyone's kind of equal. You mm-hmm. can't put a woman above a man, a man above a woman, because it's like, to be honest, women out here doing their thing, you know what I'm saying? Part. Okay. So, that part. <laughs> boy bring up good talking <laughs> right. points. Okay, part. like. Women out let here them doing know. Let them know. There's a lot of let women making more money than men. So, let them you know. know. Fact, they hustling harder don't, than a lot of you don't niggas Don't be the sucky here. nigga who got them. You know, you really not making that much money. And you don't. She making all the money, too. And, mm-hmm. you know. Yep. You spending your last, so don't be going broke yeah, trying to broke, show out for that bitch. Right. Yeah. Like, the bank. She don't love you. She making you go broke. You know, trying to goddamn do she movies got your best and shit. Interest, yeah. Y'all mm-hmm. better invest in some fire stick. <laughs> 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 Have you been on a date with a woman, like a first date, and the woman paid for everything? Oh, first date. Oh. No, because that's not that's not the type of person I am. You know. Okay. I'm. Like like I said, majority of the time, I would just go ahead and take the initiative and pay for it. Yeah. There's not even going to be no question about it because, I mean, that's just who I am. But That's right. I like that answer. That's, that, yep. Right through there. All right. All right. Um, so, okay, so I also saw Gucci explain mm-hmm. how he keeps his um marriage, you know, exciting and how he keeps Keisha happy. And um, he basically said... Uh, money was the answer. Like, he just straight up said money. And they asked, you know, for him to expand on why he felt that it was money that keeps him happy. And um, he basically just said that, you know, being broke and in love is just not fun. Like, it's going to bring problems to the relationship, don't matter how much y'all love each other. Um, But, like, when y'all got money and, you, like you said, she got herself and he can have himself, like, and y'all could just share that you know, just be happy and deal with all the other shit together, that yeah. makes it easier. So do y'all agree with that standpoint or do you feel like if you and your significant other just had money at your own leisure, would it just solve everything else that or, that y'all had going on? Or I think it would. but And I also agree that if both of y'all have money, it's easier because it's hard to date somebody without money because then you're paying for everything constantly and then you feel like you are being used. And it would ruin the relationship and potentially end the relationship. So, so money is equivalent to um, action for you. Like, so if 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 your man is like doing everything else for you besides like pay, being able to pay for certain things that you want, then how do you feel about that situation? I mean, in that sense, I wouldn't really trip, but I think it would still bring problems because Mm -hmm. even though you do all these other things, I'm paying all these bills by myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm doing literally everything financially by myself, so there's really no leeway for me to really spoil you or for us to do fun and exciting things because I have to pay out of pocket. Like, you can't even match. Like, if we go on vacation, you can't match the hotel. You can't match the flight. Mm -hmm. So it's like some stuff we ain't going to do, even though you are doing all these lovey-dovey things, Mm -hmm. which that's fine and dandy. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you reach a point where you're like, you want to be with somebody that's on your level financially as well. That's true. So it's nice, but... So do you you, you agree? Like, if your bitch didn't have money, then... I mean... I'm not your bitch, but... It's, you know... Your boo. It goes back to the vibe, too, because some people are comfortable with, you know, the little money they have, and and they're able to live... um, in a life where, you know, it's not it really not based off money or, mm-hmm. you know, they're cool with, hey, their dates being coming home and, and chilling and just spending, you know, quality time. But um, money do play a big role because I feel like as a man, you're supposed to be the head of the household. Mm-hmm. So um, usually the one who ha- who makes the most money is in the most control. So um, as a man... T- you really not. I feel like you. You really not quite there when you're not um, financially stable. I don't want to say that's the insecurity, but <laughs> it, it's it's it kind of hits because of when the woman is is really just. I don't know. For me, I couldn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> I feel you. I couldn't do that because that that fit made me feel like damn, she she paying for everything, and what do I really got to bring to the table? Mm-hmm. What does she really need me for? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so then that brings up the point of like how, so then I don't get the p- problem in, you know, us wanting men that are financially like up or financially stable. Like 
I feel like that's a, a stigma around the situation as well. Like, um, uh, if we not to say like we don't gotta be broke bitches, you know, like, but maybe we're not just as up as we could be. Um, but you meet a dude that's that's up. Uh, like I don't see the problem in y'all being able to build a genuine relationship. I don't see why the first thing is always about the fact that he has money. Because you know, that's what really emphasized, like, you know, today's everybody tricking. So it's like, you know, how people can play the role so well. How can you really know? Is they good? Is, are they there for your real intentions? Or, you know, mm-hmm. are they just playing a role until it roll, roll out? <laughs> I think, though, and let me know what y'all think. I think it's difficult to date somebody that's not where you are financially. I don't think if you're broke. I don't think you should be dating somebody that's a business owner. I don't think you should be dating anybody at all. Right, love. like if you broke, you shouldn't be dating. You shouldn't. Be you should be dating. Period. Dick nowhere, but I think taking it nowhere. No, yeah, I think that. if you are on two different financially, like financial levels, I don't think you should be date together. Just because I feel like it's different mindsets with money too. Yeah. So if you got buku dollars and then you broke, you your minds, yeah, and it's, it makes a relationship. It won't last, I feel like. Y'all not even got... Y'all can't come, really have the same things in common. Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. Mm-hmm. The places you like to go and the places another person will like to go is, you know, know based way. off the exactly. budget. Right. Yeah. Right. So you I start bringing up the easy restaurants. And <laughs> right. They don't, they're like, they don't know what. $25. Wait, what? <laughs> Damn. Oh, my God. No, that's real as hell. Well, okay, so what if our next segment uh what if we what if you were in a situation where um say your girl was um you know she wanted to she had a dream okay and she you know wanted you to help her pursue it um financially not just by support emotionally mentally blah blah, blah but she wanted you to help her pursue it financially and you're in the position to do it but um, she's not always a person that follows through with these dreams that she has. How would you go about a situation like that? Um, the best way um to give somebody to do the best thing to do for somebody is to give them the tools and leave it up to them first. Because if you just give it to someone, then they're not necessarily you know. They're not able to, you know, they don't get, they don't value it the same to them with you just gave them, if you gave them the tools and, and made them do it themselves. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't necessarily, if they really want to get it off the ground or, or, or do something with it, then if you gave them the tools and they pursue it, then, you know, I feel like they don't make give them a little push. Right. Yeah, give them a little push or give them some money to help them. That's different than you just going in there and just, here you go. Yeah. Hmm. that's real yeah that's i i think i agree with that um we could all say that we want you know that handout or we're ready for that handout and you know like once you get it a lot of the time sometimes people fumble that shit like and if you wasn't ready like mentally all of that shit and it becomes a hindrance to you because you constantly because once you give it to them one time then they come back like, oh, well, I need it this time. I need it that time. And I'm then ready, you, I'm ready. yeah, or not even just I'm ready, but they constantly come to you and. Because the expectation. Right. Like you're supposed to give it to me. If I come up with this idea, you're supposed to give it to me. Well, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. facts. Uh, especially if they're just not following through with the, with the dream that they have. Because I just feel like once you ask the first time and, you know, you actually pursue your dream, if you're actually hustling for it, it shouldn't be no reason for you to ask the second time. Right, it should have popped it off, and you should have got your yeah. You should have yeah, right, with, you like the tools, you exactly, know. and that's and that's why I say I I definitely agree with that because whether he gave you all the money up front or whatever, that is your tool or whatever. You you can fumble that shit still. He you can get the whole business, everything right there, and still fuck it up and lose all of that. So you just gotta make sure you keep it going. Right, doing what you need to do. So well, what if um, well. Yeah, that's about it with it. So, okay, I feel like that just makes it, it brings us down to uh, just dreamers versus doers, um, just in life in general, not even just with the significant other. Like, I don't know about y'all, but how y'all feel about um, just having dreamers versus, or, or doers around you? Like, um, I don't like people who just dream, talk about what they want to do and um, not actually do it. Uh, I like the people who are, we're talking about business constantly or we're talking about 
bettering ourselves in some way constantly and we're actually actively doing it. But I don't I don't know if everybody else feels the same way. Some people like to take on those projects of people who are dreamers and help them build up to, you know, what they want to be. I'm not that person. So you're not going to, so if you're with a nigga and he was just a dreamer, like, oh yeah, babe, I want to open up a barbershop, I want to open up this, I want to open up that. And y'all talked about it, but he never did it. You would end the relationship? I would end the relationship or... eventually because I just feel like if he do that with that automatically without me even having to bring that up to him, it's going to uh perspire into other parts of the relationship, like in other parts of his actions. Like if he do it with that, he going to do it with everything else. Gotcha. Like he's not going to be able to keep his word to himself. He can't keep his word to me, so um we keep that's a no go and then also if you're like starting these things and you're not following through with it too that's also a red flag for me too like I could put in you know whatever that you would need whatever is whether it's work like support like without the financial shit um but if you're not taking it somewhere I'm not gonna keep doing it no mm-hmm. sir what do you think I feel like that all goes back to like um rich in the in the in the broke thing because um you'll you'll start to put a plan of action when you're serious about something mm-hmm. so uh that goes money wise too like um in the way you think like when you think at a higher level then you know you'll you'll it's it's a difference than not just having the money mm-hmm. yet or you know just not getting it all the way mm-hmm. then um just sitting back like you said, just waiting for somebody to give you something because. So you believe in earning? Yeah, what yeah you... I feel like you really should earn it because that's the only real way you can value it for real. Because anytime it's it's handed to you, you're like, you know, what re- really can you say you did? Yeah, you sound so, like you, mm-hmm. you you know fumbled the pack before, <laughs> <laughs> like you have learned your lesson before. Learned, learned my lesson a couple times. That's, so. I feel that. Learned my lesson a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> so, what if you're in a situation with a dreamer, but they cost they have the dream, but they don't have the money, and like you said, you don't want to give just give them the money; you want them to earn it. How would you? Um, it goes to do they have the desire then? Yeah, because. If I got the money and it's not gonna hurt me, and you got the desire, then so be it. If you feel like you're gonna be with that person, do your thing. Okay. But you know, if you don't got the desire and you just just always talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, right? Then I just gonna let you keep on talking. That's facts. Yeah. <laughs> I think though, for me, I had to like, cause I will say. In the past, I was, like, a dreamer, where it's like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do that. But I feel like I wasn't, I was surrounded by other dreamers, Mm -hmm. and I wasn't surrounding myself with doers. Mm -hmm. But once I started surrounding myself with doers, I became a doer myself. So I think also you got to push your person to, like, if you, if I'm with a dreamer, and, you know, they're not in a space where there are other doers, I feel like you can take them to that space to put them in the room with people who are doers and, you know, get them off the couch and say, hey, babe, if you really want to do this, come on, let's go to this this uh, banquet, let's go to this gala, let's go to this meeting, let's meet these people, get these grants so you can really, you know, do what you want to do. So I think, you know, you don't always have to end the relationship, but sometimes you can bring your person to those opportunities as well, yeah, like you said. Them, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, but I feel like that's that's financing the dream as well, though. Like, But you don't put no money in if you put them in the room with... Successful. Yeah, like I if I had a if I had a nigga that was like, Oh yeah, I want to be a business owner and I'm like, Oh, okay, I just met you and you're like, what's some advice that you could give him? Yeah. That's not me financing anything. That's just me giving you the opportunity to meet somebody who's a business owner. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So do you feel like when it comes to friends, if you are surrounded by um people who are just dreamers, do you do you feel like you wanna take on that um that task to help bring I feel like, your friends up? Or do you feel like is that even possible? It's different, I feel like, with friends, though, because you can tell your friends constantly, like, yeah, girl, get up, get up, get up, get up, do this. But y'all don't live in the same household. Mm -hmm. Y'all not, you know, they money ain't affecting your money. don't make you shit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's your nigga, your, your, who you with, your significant other, that's different because y'all live in the same household and y'all trying to create something. Mm -hmm. In that sense, I feel like because we're in this relationship together, I'm obligated, we're obligated to each other Mm -hmm. to elevate each other. But if it's just my friend and she on her ass, like, girl, if I tell you five times and you still down... That's it. That's a wrap. You really don't want to do it. You don't have the desire. So right. you got to end that friendship and leave it at, you know, you just somebody to party with and hang with. 
I move over here with the friends who are doers. That's facts. I feel like it's different with friendships. Yep, and we just talked about that last week. What do you think? (laughs) Yeah, because, I mean, really, the time is money. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, So you got to treat your time just like it is money. So Mm -hmm. um, even if you don't give them necessarily money, if you just invest your time in it, then that, that itself is, you know, is equivalent it's just, to money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because you, mm-hmm. you can have a friend who has all these ideas and you're investing your time to get their ideas off the ground, but mm-hmm. they just want to sit there and chill and think you're supposed to do all they work. Mm-hmm. It might as well be your project and you get the money. There it is. Yep. So. Yep. Well, guys, that's about it on this topic. Um, We're going to start getting into our closing. So our challenge for the week, our sassy challenge for the week will be... um. We're going to start a saving project. Um, I think I'm going to get, like, a jug and put all of my, uh, you know, quarters, extra change, you know, all your little Rello money. Just put it all in there. Um, and I'm also going to start, like, either putting away, like, 10, you know, a week and then upping it up uh, every week, not monthly, because then you ain't going to save nothing. Um, or I'm going to, like, set aside some change. Every time I break a bill. So, like, if I break a 20 and it's $5 left, that's going to go in savings um, when I spend whatever I spend. Um, so, you guys get some saving tactics and save up some money for the end of the year. So, next year, we can take some trips. Because that's you what we try to get a savings account, too. Mm-hmm. And you get a interest on the savings account based on how much money you put in there. So, that's another way to save. You got any tips for saving? Yeah. I mean, really write it down. Like, see how much you make every month. Um Put your bill money to the side, you know, mm-hmm. then put your savings money, then put your weed money. So, <laughs> yeah, all that. <laughs> Gotta have the weed money. <laughs> all that. Put your weed money last, though. Don't put your weed money in front of all that. So. Make sure you incorporate <laughs> both gas monies, you know, like right. you need. Yeah, both gas money. Both gas. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get, get to the weed, too, okay? Um, <laughs> so, budgeting is important, indeed, with saving. I definitely agree with that. So, that's your challenge. Go ahead, get that saved up. I'm going to check in with y'all later, a couple months from now. Make sure y'all got some money in your saving accounts, okay? So, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, give our social media stuff again. Make sure that you guys know where to find us. Uh, and I will post Greg's business for you guys on the Sassy page so that you guys can get the link to his page and um, support him as well. So, Khadija, what's your uh, Twitter and IG? Khadija IJ underscore. That's it. For all of them. Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, all that. Easy peasy with Miss Geeksy. <laughs> and what's yours? Oh, um, um, Twitter is Sensei Gold House, and then Instagram is Sensei5150. And the name of your business? Premier Home Inspection. Period. Okay, guys. So y'all check him out. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.